Now the machine um, that I mentioned is the Workshop Precision Adjust Knife Sharpener. And it's quite a common principle uh, of sharpening whereby you hold the blade in a vise like this which is then and they use earth magnets to uh, secure <laughs> I've been using it quite a quite a lot to practice and make sure that uh, it was suitable for what I needed um, so it is magnetized to secure it into the holder um, and it's a principle of triangulation against the apex of the blade and moving so a fixed blade and moving the uh, stone against uh, the edge at a preset angle and the angle of cut uh, or sharpening I suppose um, at the apex is and they give you um, the general guide of 15 20 25 and 30 and some little increments uh, uh, lowering it and raising it from those fixed angles now obviously the angle um, is set as a compromise so by um, if if you raise it up what you're doing is steepening the angle at which the stone meets the apex so by turning it up to 25 I hope you've seen that this bar raises in that direction so it's angling um, the blade against the um, uh, uh, sorry the stone against the blade and giving you a consistent angle now depending on the size of the blade that you're sharpening means that the apex is going to move backwards and forwards from the vice because the vice um, I think is set as a compromise so what happens is that the angle uh, because you've moved the uh, blade further away uh, say as an example here you can see that is moved out quite considerably and then if you put a smaller thinner blade in it would drop down so by moving it up and down against the length of uh, where the actual blade is means that the angle isn't going to be as true because it's a compromise it's set um, to i suppose a common distance uh, from here and uh, if i think my geometry is correct if you lo or lengthen the uh, one the side of a triangle which obviously this is um, you're then um, uh, while this remains at 90 degrees uh, this means that the angle here is going to lessen or raise up so what you need to do um, if you've got a really big difference in knife length for example uh, a big uh, uh, cutting knife that has a, a, a longer distance you have to gauge how much um, difference the movement is and the best way I've found to do that is with just a, a, a little um, uh, I, which I use for setting my uh, uh, table saw um, blades to make sure that uh, they're at 90 uh, degrees it's just a little electronic balance it's a, a bubble balance uh, but electronically you run and that gives you the precise angle um, well gives you an idea of the difference so you can estimate 
and maybe if it was 25 you've moved out that means it's dropped down a little bit so you may need to move it up just a couple of uh, uh, little extra turns here um, we're, we're back to that micron debate um, how how real difference one or two degrees on an angle of cut makes uh, on say a lump of meat or um, um, a, a stick that you're just knocking off the bark and in a bushcraft sense um, it only really becomes critical when you're looking at um, little tiny uh, carving knives and that in itself creates a problem for this machine which I'll touch on when I uh, talk about the summary. So just as a, a, a little demonstration before I talk about the effectiveness of it, I need to, in fairness to Workshop, stress that they make it very plain on the box the knives that are uh, suitable um, for this machine. And unfortunately, you won't see anywhere listed the uh, really small blades uh, that wood carvers use. But uh, I may have found a little compromise that helps me with that. So, kitchen knife, classic kitchen knife, same sort of shape that it's indicated there. Um, similarly, uh, I've used my bush knives um, which is similar to the kitchen knife. Um, I've also looked at um, the fold-out pocket knives that are popular in bushcraft and um, I've looked at a fillet knife which they're uh, suggesting there and I've looked at a small kitchen knife now again this is where we're getting to uh, shall we say the limits of the machine when you're looking at the small images which are pocket knives when I start looking at sharpening finer blades uh, like for example my Swiss Army multi-purpose knife um, I'm then getting down to the size of blade that isn't ideal I think for this type of machine and living in England uh, well I live in Wales but uh, in the United Kingdom um, <laughs> we are heavily restricted like our gun laws in uh, knife size and these folding knives particularly if they lock are um, frowned upon by the uh, authorities as unfortunately criminals do tend to uh, um, use this type of uh, knife um, you know box cutters and things like that as a weapon and um, the government tries to restrict their use but uh, that's a, a small folding knife which certainly is acceptable uh, within the eyes of the law and uh, I mean it's it's a little ridiculous because you can go out and buy these uh, which are significantly longer um, but again laws are if you carry one of these you've got to have a purpose for carrying it you just can't say oh well I, I might need it you've got to say well I'm a, a butcher or I'm a cook and uh, this is a, as it were a tool of my trade um, pairing knives and things like that are about as uh, common a knife I suppose as you're allowed to carry for a general purpose so setting it up let's start with the big knife it's just a simple case of slackling back the grip inside the grip there is a seating which for say a small paring knife will sit 
comfortably in that at quite a low uh, setting. Uh, but when you get to uh, a thicker backed blade, although this one does uh, go in quite well, um, you need then to tighten it up to create the grip. Uh, now, the principle of sharpening um, a blade on a machine like this um, means that you're going to be able to accommodate with the slope of the knife but it's still better to ensure that this edge here runs parallel as possible with the majority of that angle so you do need to just adjust it a little bit to make sure that it is parallel and obviously the bevel on the back of the knife here that the, the, the curvature um, makes that uh, you have to adjust it slightly and then it's a question of tightening it up now in fairness to the machine my hands aren't as strong as they used to be it then slots back into the guide and is held very firmly by the magnet. Now, one of the um, benefits of having this system is that when you've done one edge, you can use a button at the back here to press it in and reverse the blade so you're using uh, or you're dealing with the other side of the blade the the other uh, slope of the apex without having to reset and you're keeping this consistent now the button at the back here is for for obvious safety reasons quite secure and i do find that a little bit of a pain uh, physically to try and squeeze it up so it's easy enough just to draw it out of the frame and slot it back in. The bar had um, uh, came with two uh, little uh, uh, rubber rings to, so you can move them up and down um, so that you can um, make sure that your slide uh, doesn't slip off the edge. Uh, like that which obviously may damage the edge um, I have to find, say I found them absolutely useless in so much as that when you just touch them they rolled up and likewise I ended up putting on a little bit of sticky tape at the bottom to stop it when you set it down like that from just sliding off the end time for coffee <laughs> So, the carriage here has three stones uh, which are changed by just turning the blade around or the carriage around and you heard it click, it locks in and the blades are sorry, the stones are 320 600 and then you've got a ceramic uh, honing plate or polishing plate in general purpose I have to say it it works very well um, 230 I probably think that that isn't that's probably a little bit finer than 230 now it could be the fact that I've used this machine uh, quite a lot to get uh, really familiar with it but it is um, I find a little bit finer which is fine I would much rather it be uh, slightly under the course suggestion um, and you work it backwards and forwards over your knife blade in that sort of uh, 
uh, motion. Now, as this is a kitchen knife, I'm going to put it to as near as damn it 25. On this knife, which I've already sharpened once with it, um, I have found that the 25, even given um, the length of this blade away from the uh, edge uh, of the holder, is pretty accurate. If I just give it one extra turn, a uh, half a turn, sorry, up, and that is setting a pretty consistent uh, angle and it's just a case of working it backwards and forwards. Now what I have found is that at first you tend to press hard and if you do what you're seeing here this does flex and however hard you try and hold it you end up supporting it with the thumb like that uh, to try and prevent it flexing up and down which is really giving the same problem that I'm finding when I'm using a stone of keeping the uh, uh, the, the strokes uh, consistently at the right angle. I've got round it a little bit particularly when I'm looking at finer knives by just putting a block under um, the um, arm to help with the leverage um, and I've got a little anvil which seems to work very well um, it's better if I use it this way and that is with something like a, a, a little paper wedge you know a bit like setting the uh, gap on your uh, uh, spark plugs that's the word I'm looking for but you'll see that even with that there still is a little bit of movement on a kitchen knife um, unless you're one of these Japanese uh, style sushi cooks who likes to whip the top off uh, a tomato so thin that you can see through it. Um, this probably wouldn't be suitable. The other problem is what you might notice here is that as you get out towards the tip of a long knife it is starting to rock backwards and forwards. Now that is basically due to the fact that I haven't really managed to get that as tight as it should be to produce the type of grip. There are pads on the inside here which are uh, rubberized which is designed to prevent that um, but even still I am finding it and in fairness to workshop it's probably to do with my weak hands uh, than anything else but nevertheless it's um, it, it's something you've got to be aware of if you were looking to set up something uh, at a really precise uh, edge. Um, some knife makers, I mean, this is their pride uh, that they have set such a high degree of consistency and angle. Uh, now the other thing that is quite noticeable is this flexing uh, it is a little bit of a pain and you do have to be really careful that you're not putting too much pressure on the edge of the blade to create that flexing
when I get the burr which I'm feeling there uh, I then would flip it over and um, do the same on the other side um, you then move up to the 600 now again I'm not going to do that on camera because to be honest uh, <laughs> you're going to lose the will to live watching somebody go backwards and forwards but what I when I've got onto the finer grip I then start counting the number of strokes and I'm starting to do downward strokes and I count the number of downward strokes which is the same as moving it away on the diamond stone or turning it over and pulling it back that's to ensure there is consistency on both sides of the blade and then the final honing I move on to the ceramic and here I've found that I start off and I'm moving in a sliding motion towards the tip and this I'm found produces a much more polished uh, effect on the actual blade so there you are that's the principle of the machine um, does it work well this is a knife that I use and it's used as a bushcraft knife and um, I've sharpened it using this system and this system alone uh, and it was quite abused and certainly um, it's achieved a reasonable edge is it razor sharp would it shave the hairs off the back of my hand in truth I don't think so um, I think it comes under the heading of needs work and um, I'm going to give the machine as it were for producing uh, the type of uh, edge that I would really like to see in a bushcraft knife uh, 9 out of 10 uh, sorry 8 or 7 out of 10 it's sharp enough hence it's not being taken down to uh, A really low score but I'm sure that given half an hour or an hour on my stones I would uh, produce um, as good if not better edge when I'm looking at small knives something like that a roughing knife is probably as small as the machine can cope with um, and I think you'll see the reason why if you use the back plate it's far far too fine thin sorry and putting it in the grip to give you enough security to stop it wobbling around takes it really to its limit of use now if I drop it down to 20 degrees I think you'll see what I'm talking about it 
only just clears this edge and I've had to actually file it down to avoid it rubbing against the holder and if you get down to my mini knives detailing and uh, mini knives you'll you'll see that it really to give you a safe and secure grip it's just too small so I was disappointed and um, uh, it meant that uh, as lovely a gift as this was it wasn't really going to um, sort out my small knives however I do have um, a whetstone grinding machine it isn't a Tormek, but Tormek make uh, a, an accessory for their machine um, which holds small knives so that when you're putting them against uh, the whetstone, <laughs> this angle problem isn't um, uh, going to be a problem. So I thought, well, let's give it a try and see what we can achieve. So you set the blade into the holder uh, as parallel as you can now small knives have irregular shaped handles um, and it means that to get a good tight grip at 90 degrees which it has to be to this blade means that you just can't set it to be totally parallel to that but what you do uh, as you would on the n small knife holder that uh, comes with your whetstone grinder you then lock in your bar and you raise it up slightly to create that parallel that you need to create that um, distance that means then um, of course I set it up so you can't see uh, but that then sets the blade sufficiently far away to clear uh, this grip and it is producing um, a pretty good angle on the blade it still has the flexing problem I hope you'll see how that just even a light stroke is dropping dropping it down um, I've clamped it to benches um, but when it's clamped to a bench it still flex um, so we're looking at the same sort of uh, support that's needed under the arm to take up some of that flex so you are getting a, a pretty consistent stroke against the blade as you can see it's not ideal it doesn't make it quick uh, and I have to say I'm tempted more and more that if I do need to reshape a knife of going back to my stones 
as an overall review, um, it wasn't expensive. We're, when I say it isn't expensive, some of these type of machines, uh, which have a lot more rigidity and probably flexibility in use, but even then I've not seen any of those, these type of machines used for blades of this size. I've only ever seen them used for kitchen knives, hunting knives, and the bigger uh, blade uh, folding knives. So they can run up to three, 350 pounds sterling. Um, you're then looking at belt grinders that turn away um, and you set your knife against the uh, rising belt. Um, even, um, shall we say, a, a, a reasonable machine, w you're looking again at nearly 300 pounds sterling. Uh, this is 50 pounds sterling. What I would say is this, if you're the guy who likes a, a good type of bush knife to be working around the garden or uh, camping trips and things like that, this is fine for setting the apex, giving you a, a, a reasonably good sharp knife um, that you'll be happy to take into the field and it will enable you to uh, sort out a damaged knife. Is it really going to help somebody who is a hobby carver? Probably not. Um, for um, a much less than £50 investment, one or two um, diamond stones or wet stones or oil stones, um, you know, investing 50 or 60 pounds in that sort of carve, uh, sharpening setup, you're probably going to get better value. Of course, you are going to have to practice and you'll have to spend time uh, getting it right. And you're going to have to hope that your hands will remain strong. So I wouldn't want to put off anybody from buying this product and I do hasten to say I'm not being um, sponsored in any way to say this. It was a gift and I was very pleased to have it and it was interesting to use and I can see it has some good general uh, use um, provided you do exactly as it says on the tin and only sharpen larger kitchen knives, uh, filleting knives and um, uh, maybe large paring knives. It's not really intended uh, to use uh, Tormek guides, uh, etc. I suppose you could maybe make uh, a, a little uh, blade holder that fits into here, um, but then, you know, you, it, it all rather defeats the purpose of having the machine in the first place if you're going to have to really start making um, extensions for it. Maybe a workshop will see this video or, or who knows. Um, they may also get comments from other people who bought them about the same problem that I'm finding. And they may come up with, um, say, a foot that here that gives it extra brace or uh, an extension that uh, maybe a longer uh, blade item here uh, with a, a, a finer angle. If you've got what I would call good old general compromise use with not much demand on it, fine. It's, it's a handy tool in the box. Would I specifically recommend for a woodcarver or a um, knife maker or anybody who uses say um, knives for cutting leather and things like that um, I'd say probably not there are maybe uh, 
worth or it's worth saving up the extra money and investing in say a more precise type of machine if machine grinding is the only way you can go and uh, maybe just practice with um, developing your muscle memory and uh, getting it to, to the sharpness that you need with um, the other methods, stones and plates. So I hope this is of interest. Um, I have not seen, I've seen loads of videos about this uh, sharpening device, uh, but none that are obviously UK based. Um, mostly, um, I, th I think Workshop is popular in the American market. Workshop do also have uh, a little belt grinding machine and all that sort of thing. But again, I, I've only ever seen them used for the, the bigger type uh, of knife and bushcraft knife. So maybe this machine uh, just isn't suitable for the purpose which uh, I hoped it would be. Uh, and in fairness to Workshop, please don't be put off provided you can genuinely find a use for it. Okay, um, thanks very much for your time and uh, I look forward to seeing you soon uh, when we're back in the workshop.